AI systems help us to determine how we drive, what articles we read, what friends we like, and increasingly even whom we date or whom we vote for. So they really shrink our human space of autonomy and take over more and more of the decisions that we humans uh, used to make. One could say they manipulate us more and more and are exerting their autonomous uh, agency to an increasing extent. I'm Anton Korinek. I'm an associate professor of economics at the University of Virginia and the Darden School of Business. The Industrial Revolution uh, started about two and a half centuries ago and has basically been a story of relentless automation. For the first two centuries, I would say that the automation has mainly substituted for our physical capabilities, for our physical strength. In fact, nowadays, for almost all jobs, sheer physical strength is no longer a requirement. Now, what has been quite fantastic over that period is that technological progress and automation has in fact lifted all boats and has increased living standards in, at the time, mostly the Western world by a factor of four or five. Now, if we look at the developments of more recent decades, automation has uh, much more substituted for our mental capabilities. And it has also left an increasing fraction of the workforce behind, in particular, uh, lower skilled workers. And that's reflected in a whole range of um, dismal statistics so, for example, over the past four decades, the average worker has uh, not experienced any real income gains uh, and, by some measures, is actually worse off. At the same time, uh, those uh, who have skills that are in demand have uh, seen their income soar and the economy has increasingly tended towards a superstar economy. We economists always like to speak about demand, for example, demand for labor rather than the level of employment. And over the past uh, decades, automation has certainly reduced demand for a number of types of labor, in particular for unskilled labor. Reductions in demand can be reflected in two ways in the market. They can either lead to a decline in employment or a decline in wages, or a combination of the two. And in fact, uh, if you look around the world, you can see that different societies have uh, made different choices along this continuum. So in the US, for example, we have let wages adjust, and as a result of that, the wages of unskilled workers have gone down in real terms. In other countries, um, perhaps France comes to mind, wages have not been allowed to go down and instead we have seen reductions in unemployment and correspondingly large increases in unemployment. So yeah, automation uh, has had uh, this effect on demand and has decreased either employment or wages and I think both of uh, these developments are concerning because they increase inequality and increase social discontent. The most recent large wave of technological progress in the area of information technology has a very strong tendency to lead to natural monopolies. So if you produce an information good, think for example of you program a search engine or an e-commerce website, you have a large initial investment, but then the cost of serving one additional customer is extremely low. So once you have programmed, for example, Google search engine, if it is used by a million people or by a billion, it makes very little cost difference because information goods are so cheap to reproduce. And that means that from a technological standpoint, it is actually most efficient to produce that information good only once. And in the market, that is reflected in this increasing tendency to generate large monopolies that specialize in specific information goods. So we have one dominant search engine 
We have one dominant operating system for PCs. Uh, we have one dominant social network, one dominant e-commerce site. And that's a reflection of this natural tendency to create monopolies. Now, the flip side of that, the downside of it, is uh, that it gives uh, those players enormous market power. They can extract monopoly rents. They also have increasing political power uh, that we have to be concerned about. And we can see that it has been abused in some of these instances. And yeah, so that's uh, a growing social concern that information technologies lead to this uh, superstar economy where very few firms and very few entrepreneurs reap an increasing fraction of the rewards, of the gains from technological progress. I view uh, artificial intelligence really as a continuation of the process of automation, but of automation of our human intelligence. The current wave of AI, which uh, has been uh, underway for roughly a decade, is mainly due to deep learning. Deep learning emulates in some ways the way that our human brain works. I should say we are clearly not at the level where artificial intelligence can perform the same kinds of general tasks that the human brain can perform. But the trajectory suggests that at some point artificial intelligence will reach the level of general intelligence that we humans have. Another way of saying it is uh, right now the human brain is the most powerful supercomputer in the world, but uh, that won't last forever. As uh, AI systems become increasingly powerful, they also become increasingly autonomous and increasingly independent. And in some of my recent research, I have uh, started to analyze what I call artificially intelligent agents. So I basically observe that AI systems operate in the economy in an increasingly autonomous fashion. They uh, make an increasing number of corporate decisions. So for example, if we apply for jobs or if we apply for, for credit, the decisions on whether we get the job or we get the credit are increasingly made by AI systems. They also affect more and more of our personal decisions. If we type something in the search engine, uh, an AI system decides what results to show us, what is most likely to satisfy our needs, or maybe just what hooks us most efficiently. And of course, we can also see AI systems that are uh, specifically designed to operate autonomously, for example, to trade in financial markets or to increasingly drive uh, on roads and autonomous vehicles. Uh, so those would also be artificially intelligent agents in a specific area that are operating completely independently. Now, what I want to emphasize about these artificially intelligent agents is they are actually less and less under our control. They are really acting autonomously in an increasing number of dimensions. So nominally, we humans always have ownership of uh, artificial entities because we have designed our legal system such that everything is ultimately owned by humans. We can have corporations, but ultimately the corporations belong to humans. But the humans have, in fact, less and less control over what the algorithm is doing. So, for example, when Facebook uh, contributed to the political disinformation campaign in recent elections, Mark Zuckerberg, the majority owner and also CEO of Facebook, initially had no clue what was going on. It was just a system on autopilot uh, that was doing whatever optimized its algorithm. Uh, and Mark Zuckerberg was actually quite shocked to find out what was happening in the black box. I think we are woefully unprepared for the coming age of artificial intelligence. There is a whole range of um, policy issues that I think we should be more prepared for and we need to be more prepared for. I think we need more awareness 
that AI is not just some cute tool that can produce neat movies or useful search recommendations or useful driving instructions, but that AI is really evolving at a rapid pace and uh, the impact that it will have on the economy is going to grow year after year after year. It's exponential growth, uh, which is something uh, that's uh, oftentimes beyond the linear extrapolation capacities of the human mind. I think we have difficulty imagining how much of a change AI will uh, in fact uh, lead to uh, if we look more than a couple of years ahead. In terms of more specific policy issues, uh, one of the big questions is uh, the question of uh, what will it imply for labor markets? What will it imply for demand for labor? I think at some point, and this is now probably something like a half century away, AI systems will be able to perform any human job, no matter if that is creative activities, activities that involve social intelligence, emotional intelligence. Ultimately, all of these are manifestations of uh, the computing capacity of our human brain, and therefore they will also be accessible to a sufficiently advanced AI system. Now, we need to be prepared for a world in which there is basically no jobs in which humans will surpass the machines. In the long run, that's one of the main policy issues that I can see. In the shorter run, as we will automate more and more jobs, the main problem that I see is one of inequality. So we have already discussed that um, in recent decades, the gains of technological progress have been shared rather unequally, and our current systems of redistribution, of pre-distribution, are really quite inadequate. In fact, in recent years, we have taken several steps backward when it comes to addressing the inequality generated by technological progress. So my hope is that uh, over the next uh, five to ten years, which is the period in which I expect that we will really see uh, much starker implications of uh, progress in AI for labor demand, uh, that we will hopefully manage to set up social protection systems that will take care of the losers of progress.